story time on how I got stuck on the water slide on the cruise. Go on this water slide, you have to weigh a bare minimum of 120 pounds. First day that I tried to go on the water slide, he weighed me and I only weighed 119.6 pounds. And he told me to go eat a sandwich and come back and I could try again. And I literally went and ate a sandwich and tried again, except for I still did not make the requirement. Next day, as I was walking past the water slide, I asked if I could try again. And for some reason, I magically hit 120 pounds. It was one of those water slides where the floor drops out from underneath you and you just free frog. I go on the slide and I have just enough weight to make it to the top ridge of the first loop But I have to scoot my butt over it to make it down on the second loop I did not make it I didn't have enough weight So I went up and then I went down backwards, but when I went backwards I went right past the door So I was under the assumption that I got stuck in the only part of the water slide where there was no escape I start panicking I sit up in the tube it's humid it's hard to breathe in there water's rushing water's in my contacts I'm trying to see I realize that I'm in the clear part of the tube so I look down I'm on the part of the tube that hangs off the ship hundreds of feet down below is the ocean and I'm like mm, don't look that way so I look up at the guy who sent me down and I'm like hey I like clear the fog off the, the tube and I'm like bang and I'm like how do I get out of here I'm freaking out because in front of me is an upward hike on the water slide I'm in a loop okay and I'm at the bottom of the loop in my mind it's up and up I don't know how I'm supposed to get out well he's pointing this way he's like go that way so I move this way into the water slide which is like pitch black because it was dark and covered and that is when I found the escape door and the guy opened it up and he let me out he gets me out and he's like are you okay and I literally look at him and I was like that was not fun and then I just left and uh, I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie but that was horrifying Would you ever let your seven-year-old daughter get acrylic nails? If you would have asked me like three years ago, I'd have been like, oh, heck no. However, my tune has obviously changed. And that is because Prue has severe anxiety, like severe, intense, debilitating anxiety. And one of the ways that she showcases her anxiety is with picking. She is a prolific picker of any wound, scab, anything on her body. She picks and will not let it heal. So she had mosquito bites last summer that she carried over into the new year because she wouldn't let him heal. She scratched the scabs off and then they would get like icky and gross looking and she just would pick and pick and pick. And I did not know how to make it stop. I couldn't. No matter how short I cut her nails, she would figure it out. So I did acrylic nails because I have them and you cannot pick with acrylic nails. Like you cannot get a good scab pick. So I put them on her and what do you know? It freaking worked. She has not been able to pick. Her scabs heal whenever she falls and cuts herself. Instead of it lasting for months, it just goes away. And so while it is a bit of an unorthodox method, something I wouldn't have imagined myself doing, it was very effective. So if you ever see a little seven-year-old with a full set of acrylic nails, don't judge them all because you never know why. <laughs> Okay, it's time for another creepy story time. My parents had me in their early 20s and ended up getting divorced when I was less than a year old. I often spent the night at my grandma's house on my mum's side since my mum didn't have much money at the time. I don't remember this happening, but my mother and grandmother tell me the story like it was yesterday. When I was really little I would come out of my room and tell everyone that there was a lady that stood over my crib at night and watched me sleep. Since I was so little everyone thought I was just making up stories and it was my imagination or I was just dreaming. This continued on for months and one day my mom and grandma Get ready with me while I tell you guys about how I accidentally snitched on my sister in high school for sneaking out. So she was in 12th grade and I was in 9th grade, but I probably had the maturity level of like a 5th grader and the knowledge of a 5th grader. To put things in perspective, at this time I was sleeping with my little brother because we would stay up all night and play Minecraft. Very like well under what I should have been at my age. So one night, me and my little brother finished our Minecraft Chronicles. And I believe I fell asleep for a little bit, but then I noticed my sister's light was on. So I was like, I'm going to go be nice and turn that off for her. Also, if you can hear like some weird sounds, the people above us, I believe are doing their laundry and it is so loud. And it's been doing this for like an hour. So I was like, I'm filming my get ready with me. 
So I went to turn her TV off and I noticed there was like blankets covering her like on her bed and I was like, oh my gosh, like she's not gonna be able to breathe. And when I tell you this is literally my ninth grade thoughts. So when I pulled the blanket back to help her breathe better, I saw these pillows like in position that looked like a human. And this is gonna sound so dramatic. After I did that, I noticed her curtain was like blowing and it's nighttime, so everything was like more dramatic to me. So in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, somebody like kidnapped my sister, left her TV, her light on, made it look like there was somebody still sleeping in her bed so that they could get away with this. So I'm already freaking out, like already on the verge of tears. And I'm like, I have to go like run to my parents' room and tell them that Sarah is kidnapped. And how naive I was at the time definitely kept me from understanding the situation, obviously. So I go into my parents' room and I'm like, guys, Sarah's kidnapped. And I'm like crying already. And the first thing my mom does is hop out of bed and goes, Sarah snuck out. And I was like, uh, like no part of me thought that. I was like, no mom, like she's kidnapped. You don't understand. The curtain was like swinging in the dark. So I start sitting on the couch while my parents are like calling her and going outside to see where she's at. And I'm like crying, but at this point I'm like, maybe I did accidentally snitch. So my sister gets home and she's like explaining her side of the story to my parents. and why she had to do what she did and i'm just sitting there like um so at this point she's obviously a little sad because she got in trouble i would have got in trouble too and i'm just like i'm gonna go in her room and comfort her and don't think i'm a snake because i didn't know not my stupid self saying to her i wouldn't have told on you i just thought you got kidnapped she goes you told yeah that was me moral of the story if you ever think you're not a cool person at least you're not me